Hey guys, good morning. Uh, last night was super wet, so I didn't do much after I got done eating. I uh, actually really just went back uh, to the hostel and uh, went to bed. Uh, but this morning, I kind of played myself. It's Sunday morning. Um, I spent way too much cash yesterday. Um, and me being stubborn Eric, I decided not to go to the ATM and try to walk around and find an exchange place. Everything's closed. So uh, I actually missed the morning feeding for the KL Bird Park, which is the main reason I, I wanted to go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go tomorrow morning, but today uh, I'm going to go to my favorite Indian restaurant, which is called Beetle Leaf for lunch. It's about 10.30 now. They open in about half an hour. Uh, I'm going to go to the Islamic Arts Museum, and I'm going to go uh, electronic shopping. I'm thinking about building a new PC. Uh, so I'm going to take you guys along. Uh, sorry this video is a little bit everywhere uh, because it's kind of a vacation for me. I'm not really working or organizing stuff. But uh, yeah, see you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, lunchtime uh, at Beetle Leaf, as I promised, my favorite, favorite Indian restaurant. Uh, we have, and I got some company. Hey, I found another black person. Look at her from South Carolina and in Norwegian. Look, look at them. Right, Ebony and Ivory over here. I didn't even pay attention. Alright, so I have um, uh, my favorite you know, garlic butter naan. Then I've got a butter chicken. Uh, what'd you get? Chicken marsala. Uh, chicken marsala with rice, of course. And then he got a chicken biryani. It's really good. Um, I'm still waiting on the masala tea, which is absolutely my favorite thing that they had here. Um, but all of this, I, I, I'll let you guys know what the final bill is, but it's relatively inexpensive. It's less than $10 already. Um, and this is one of the more expensive places in, um, in this area of the city because it's a proper, like you guys can see, it's a proper sit down, uh, cutlery kind of restaurant. Uh, as opposed to the place where normally it's, everything is on uh, banana leaf paper and you eat with your hands with uh, So it's going to be uh, a little bit mm -hmm. He's dying over here, so let me help. Okay, so the masala tea has actually arrived. And usually there's a little film on top of it, but it, this one doesn't have it. Usually that means it's been overcooked. But this is one of my favorite. It's a dough song. So it's a very uh, thin, made crust pastry, as you guys can see. And then you get these little chutneys. Four different kind of chutneys. And a spicy, a little bit of mild. One is more garlicky and more clean. But yeah, that is a dough sauce. So this is the restaurant, guys. The Beetle Leaf. Uh, the Beetle Leaf. The Chutney Nut. So that meal for three of us came up to 74 ringgit, which is about 16 US dollars. Um, and it was good. Yeah, really, really good. How'd you like it? Good. Really, good, really good. It's all the best Indian food I had in my life. Yeah, it's really good Indian food. Um, and that is over, I mean, I would say that's easily triple what um, the smaller restaurants are gonna be, uh, but it's 100% safe. You don't have to worry about it at all, so. Uh, hey guys, so we have made it to the Islamic Art Museum officially. Um, it is uh, 14 ringgit to get in. Um, today was actually 12 ringgit. And we are, take a look at the inside. I'm carrying like three things. But hey, check this out, check this out though. All right, we found more black people. Look, look, look. So, there's, there's one black woman, two black women, Hello. three black women. That's good. And then we got a white guy for uh, for uh, affirmative action reasons, of course. But, uh, and here's the price menu. Over here, fourteen. All right, so I won't be doing that much talking. I, you guys know I love to talk, but I won't do that much talking in this museum. Uh, and I'm gonna definitely switch cameras uh, because it's a little bit low light. But this Islamic Art Museum is one of the most impressive collections of Islamic art anywhere in the world. Um, the one that I just saw recently in Copenhagen, if you guys remember that video, uh, was just a small fraction of what they actually have here. The beauty of this museum is it not only uh, traces the roots of Islam, but also the impact that Islam has had on uh, Malaysia, on Thailand, on China, uh, a lot of areas of the world that we don't hear a lot about in the West when it comes to Islam outside of the Middle East. So uh, this display is absolutely wonderful and I look forward to showing you guys. All right, so this is uh, the first room, uh, the model room, where they have uh, beautiful displays. I wish I had my ND filter, guys, sorry. But the, oh God, that's terrible. Uh, let me figure this out. My ND, my... Uh, CP filter would have made it a lot easier for you guys to see this. But these are all replicas of different areas, different mosques around the world. All the way around. And look at this ceiling, guys. Even the building is a work of art. Look at this. Beautiful. 
we have the uh, Quran manuscript gallery um, showing pieces of Qurans from around the world. Uh, also uh, pieces of uh, cartography maps um, that have been done by uh, Islamic explorers around the world. And actually some of the oldest Qurans that are still in existence. This is a uh, Turkish. And from all around the world, you get some from Iran, uh, some from Turkey. On this side. Yeah. This is from Northern Africa. And they keep everything uh, temperature controlled in this room. Obvious reason that. Can't see it. Uh, right there. Stop moving for a second for you guys. Look at the scale of the room. Okay, so this is significant. So this is also uh, called the Kishwa. Um, it is the uh, curtain from the Kaaba where Muslims actually play, which is basically, which is Mecca. There's no basically, that's what it is. And this came from the mosque in Mecca, in Kiva. The India Gallery. Uh, taking a look at the subcontinent of India and Islam's impact on it. Any of the details. Uh, and where, let me find a piece. Ah, right here. Just the intricate details and everything they created. And the sword work. Let's zoom in here. All of their soul work here, still daggers. That's some uh, traditional weapons. Jewelry. And the level of detail in, in things that were just used in common every day. Is mother of pearl plate and small little basket box. Ooh, sorry about that, focus, folks. It's the Khatib chair. This was a gift from the Indian government uh, to Al Haj, the first uh, prime minister of Malaysia. And this was used at the national mosque by the imam. Let you see the scale of the gift. Gebiak, oh God, I can't pronounce it, but Gebiak door. So this is a door in Indonesian culture, uh, specifically uh, uh, people who uh, uh, follow Islam, and it was designed to uh, so convey social status, uh, to separate a guest or servant from the actual family. That's what it is. And look at the intricate details in the door. Area is dedicated to textiles uh, in Islam, including clothing. And take a look at what the Silk Road actually looked like. Scroll in a bit. You can see Mongolia cutting all the way across from around Xi'an all the way through. Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Northern Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, all the way over to Turkey, and then Istanbul. All right. Look at, pop some rug. This place is uh, just massive, as you guys can see. It's really beautiful space. So something about Islamic dress in uh, places like Malaysia, um, uh, China, India, that the that you don't really convey with Islam in the Middle East is the decorative and ornate colors, especially on female dress. This is Moroccan. Uh, 
It's a Palestinian. It's a Palestinian dress from the 20th century. This is Turkish. These are Turkish quilts and rugs. And to, and to this day, you guys can still see um, the detail in Turkish uh, rug making. This is called a kuchi dress. A kuchi dress. Afghanistan. You still see these, actually. Not as often, but you still see these in Afghanistan if you go. This is a 32-piece ivory chess set from India. I'm not advocating ivory, but I'm just saying these are beautiful. These are stunning. These are all paper mache, actually. This is uh, paper mache work. And these are lacquer paper mache. I know we all remember paper mache from school. So this is a room that is decorated uh, for the bride on the night before her wedding. And all of this is hand decorated by family and friends, including the father. Down the bed. So this is the armory gallery uh, celebrating the uh, weapons and armory of Islam uh, military, specifically the Persians. The Persians was probably the most uh, highly decorated and well-respected military in history. One of, of course, because they continuously advanced militarily, and eventually they were overtaken, but. you to get better and look at the craftsmanship you don't see that on a m16 these days so beautiful work I wanted you guys to see on the musket how detailed they are these are works of, they're not only weapons but they are pieces works of art this so this is the coin gallery and what a lot of people don't understand is that usually when a new leader or sultan came into power they would totally remit all the coins uh, this back focusing uh, all the way starts over these are from 661 the Umayyad dynasty, who are beasts, by the way. And the Fatimid dynasty. And the Ottoman dynasty all the way down. And come around here. To some uh, Bitgri and Tombak. These trains. Look at the details that are in these trains. And these are all hand done. It was long before mass production. Long before mass production. It details of all of these. And these are everyday household items. This isn't, uh, these weren't created as works of art. These were created to be used in the home on a daily basis, which they were. Uh, water jugs, teapots. Something you have to remember is that the Ottoman Empire or Islam uh, was a conquering culture. So they were in Persia, Byzant uh, Byzantium, uh, Antola, Mesopotamia, Egypt, China. And, and by interacting with and conquering these cultures, they were also inheriting this, these different techniques for pottery and metalwork. So a lot of these may look familiar to you because a lot of this uh, metalwork came from already established cultures, especially in areas of China and Southern Europe. Look at the details, look at the luster at work, which we still actually see quite a bit of today. And if you go to places like Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, you're gonna see a lot of this. A lot of this is still being created today. This is a collection of Ottoman people artifacts or pieces um, collected from uh, Tokapi Palace and you guys saw that in my Istanbul visit video 
Got these beautiful pieces of jewelry. Uh, obviously earrings here. Then brooches here, necklace. These are jewelry boxes uh, for rings. Uh, the lighting's not good, sorry about that. So I wanna make sure you guys uh, checked out the beautiful calligraphy in Islam and the detail that is used in displaying passages from the Quran or announcements, uh, genealogies, things of that nature. But like, when you look at a piece like this, it's one thing out, but then you come in and you see the lettering on the inside. Look at that, all the way through. Details, and it comes all the way down here. And these are seals. Oh, there used to be a really nice, uh, a really nice one. This used to be right. There was one uh, right here, but they moved. obviously it's not there. But these are Chinese. These are the seals. And you can actually still see the um, the rubber seals that they use sometimes here to make those red letters uh, all around the city here. So if you want to get one made, uh, and look here. Can you see? This absolute art. So this is uh, one of the courtyards, but something that you'll notice uh, in Islam is that the art doesn't only extend to the interior. Uh, the art always extends into the public spaces and the open areas because it's such a huge part of Islam is to be outside, to be connected with others, uh, the community, the family. So you see the art actually carry over into the public spaces. That's why the courtyards of mosques are still considered holy places in a lot of instances. Look at this. And this is Petronas Towers. You guys have probably seen this many times, but... And we are down here just in time for the light show and water show. A very popular uh, tourist destination or event. See everybody here. Right on the water. Here's a close-up look from the backside, right up underneath the towers. 